All right. Welcome to the Big Three Facebook Live show. This is Melody with Pro Event Planners. To start us off, I'm going to play, play some upbeat music, which is timely considering this madness that's going on with the impeachment on TV. It's those videos are, are too much. So this song I'm about to play is by a Jamaican artist called Sizzla. And he is saying that you should have good ways about you so that you can live longer. And for those people who are trying to wait for your downfall, kind of watching and hoping and excited when things go wrong, they'll get bad, bad karma and it's going to affect them negatively. So the gist of it is you want to live a long life, do good, be good, and you get good karma. All right. It's going to be in Patua, so, but just vibe with the music if you're, if you're not from the islands. Okay. Here we go. Of which they create all around. They criticize their own. If they were to drown, I they're not different from those scribes and Pharisees who run around. I Skylark in the streets, friends in the towns. They're never too positive. They find a joy making people business their own. I before you dance abroad. Hurts with pass, I am gay. Good ways. Not a screw face, but them good ways. True ways. Good ways. Ah, uh, what do you say? Let me tell you. Big all about on top. How a donkey job won't fill off. Things that them have a secret. The babies reveal that them are work with Good ways. Yes, 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 yes. Let me tell you, these days you need to have good ways about you, good energy, good words, good vibe, because let me tell you, the world needs it yesterday o'clock. All right? So today's show, I'll be showing you three ways to mimic a reality show to get event engagement. I know I had a creative moment and I know that this can work for you. My name is Melody Dixon and I'm the CEO and founder of Pro Event Planners, creating fabulous events on any budget. The foundation for what I do stems from 28 years of experience in the hospitality and events industry. I have a degree in hospitality and one in business administration. I got all my training and skills and tips and everything the foundation of my education and knowledge came from working for big brands. Doubletree, Sheraton, Hilton, uh, Marriott, trained in uh, catering sales, conference services, all of it, banquets. So I learned my way up through the ranks and I use what I know to help forward thinking startups who are just starting a business, just launching their product, seasoned corporations who they're already on the market, they already know what they're doing and they have yearly programs that they do. 
There's a yearly State of the Union address, a yearly holiday party, company picnic, uh, HR uh, sexual harassment training, all of that that they normally do. They need a planner to set up the space, get the audiovisual working right and finding the right vendors and handle all the behind the scenes of it all so that they can focus on what they need to. The secret sauce for what I do comes from me listening to what my clients are not saying, executing on that, and blowing their minds. You know, they're happy to have me. I'm happy to have them. It's a win-win situation. My intention with this vehicle of pro-event planners, my social media platforms, is to make it easy for people to connect. So this show is going to give you quick pro tips if you hashtag if you go in my facebook business page and in the search field you put hashtag quick pro tips i have posted two so far if you want to find out a little more about me the face behind the brand and the company you can check out uh sip and chat with melody and you'll see the ones that I've done so far and you can hear about my childhood, how I grew up, what got me into hospitality. And the most recent one is what my favorite thing to do is when I'm home, which is gardening. Tonight, I'm going to do two things. I'm gonna share with you an industry update because even though I give you tips for your events, for those who are companies, those in HR, those who are in sales and marketing for companies and they wanna have events, they need to know what's going on in the industry and I am here to help. All right, so let me get my information here. Great. So here's a roundup of the largest convention facilities in the US, whether they're open and what they've been doing behind the scenes to improve safety. Some were set up as hospitals, uh, Miami Beach Convention Center and a whole bunch of other ones around the US because they're so huge. They were expecting this pandemic to kind of just explode and the hospitals could not manage the overload. So they turned convention space into giant hospitals. Being in my daytime job at a hotel, I've seen RFPs for huge infrastructure companies coming to the area to convert these convention centers into, into hospitals. So good for the convention center because they got used during the, the pandemic but there's some that really had no choice but to close some of them uh, developed new health and safety protocols using the downtime to make major building upgrades or even offering their facilities for vaccine distribution sites or alternate care facilities some decided to renovate some expanded, some improved, some people or some convention centers leveled up on their tech. The DC Convention Center has added a state-of-the-art hybrid event broadcast room that is noteworthy. That is going to be a thing for the future. I don't, based on what I'm seeing, I don't think everything is going to go back to the way it was before. We've tasted and we've seen that things can be different. So hybrid events are here to stay. It was before, but now that the world had to resort to that, I mean, the Zoom calls and the Microsoft Teams and all the other platforms that are there have reduced companies' event spend because they don't have to pay for travel and hotel accommodations for their staff to fly to Vegas to the convention center. There's airline, there's uh, Uber expenses or rent a car, there's dining. All that is cut because the people are home with 
a jacket on the top and a PJ on the bottom, participating in the convention from their home. There are some that are adding hand sanitizer stations. They're setting up a system where they have staggered attendance. They have specific entries and exits, wider aisles with directional signage, floor stickers, temperature checks for all guests entering the exhibit halls, and enhanced cleaning protocols. They're also training the staff on how to navigate through this, this new world. So I'm gonna list out a few of the convention centers that are open. Pay attention to the size of their exhibition or event or ballroom space. It's huge, most of them. Orange County Convention Center, 2.1 million square feet of exhibition space. That's a lot. That's a lot of space. That means it could hold a lot of people anyway. A lot of staff hired. And now with the events being less, what happened to those people? Georgia World Congress Center, 1.5 million square feet. George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, 753,000 square feet. Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C., 703,000 square feet of exhibition space. Oh, I, I don't remember if I said uh, the one in Houston was 753,000. St. Louis, uh, the American Center St. Louis, 500,000 square feet of space. And Music City Center in Nashville is 350,000 square feet of exhibition space. Those convention centers are open and up and running. Now, are they fully booked? I don't know. I don't know. But if most places are clo closed, then it stands to reason that they would get the compression from that. Here are the convention centers that are closed. Miami Beach Convention Center. They're doing COVID testing right now. That center has 500,000 square feet of space and a 60,000 square foot ballroom. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more details on Miami Beach Convention Center because that's where we are in Florida. That's one of the big places to have a convention. So they have increase their cre their cleaning protocol all staff wear ppes personal protection equipment they have portable and wall mounted hand sanitizing stations they have portable static and digital signage they have individually sealed and packaged disposable utensils and condiments for when they uh, set up their food displays. Other places that are closed, Chicago's McCormick, 2.6 million square feet of event space. Las Vegas Convention Center, 2.5 million. Vegas is like a convention mecca. I've been to several conventions out there myself, tour and travel, and with the hotel brands that I work for. It's a Mecca. The New Orleans Ernest N. Morial Convention Center, 1.1 million. K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in Dallas, 1 million square feet. Sands Expo and Convention Center in Las Vegas, 937,000 square feet of space. And the Moscone Center, San Francisco, 883,000. What's another big one? It, it goes down from there, ending at the Colorado Convention Center, 584,000. It's, it's tough on people, but the good thing is that these companies are taking the time to improve themselves, preparing for what the new face of events will look like. 
And speaking of New Face, I'm going to share with you information on the Broward Convention Center, another big convention center here in South Florida. They are right now undergoing a one billion, with a B, dollar convention center expansion project to make it 1.2 million square feet. They're extending the main exhibit hall for a total of 350,000 square feet. A new 65,000 square foot ballroom facing the intercoastal way is being built. <clears throat> They've added an additional 50,000 square feet of flexible meeting space. And flexible just means maybe it's a large room that you can make into several smaller rooms with those sliding walls. If you are a venue that's fairly large, that's a good way to kind of increase your revenue. Get that sliding wall, whatever the initial cost is, you'll make it back. Because instead of just having one giant room, you can make it into two. If you're doing weddings, ceremony on one side, reception on the other. Or if you're doing a corporate event, general session here, breakout rooms there. Okay, think about that. And now is a good time to do it. There's not a lot of people having in a lot of in-person events uh, like they used to. So now it's the time to do all the improvements. Additionally, the Broad Convention Center is adding an 800 room connecting upscale headquarter hotel operated by Omni Hotels. And this is going to allow them to get larger events to South Florida. So before that little strip of 17th Street and Fort Lauderdale Beach, I mean, it's a lot of rooms, but to the size conventions that they can get, we, they probably weren't able to handle it. With this additional 800 rooms and what's on that 17th Street and Fort Lauderdale Beach, they can for sure handle larger events. They're doing multiple upgrades, including forward thinking technologies, innovative dining concepts, versatile pre-function space, and they've built, hi Linda, thanks for joining us. They've built an iconic waterfront plaza with multiple group event spaces. And that's right by Port Everglades. You can watch the ships come in and out and all that, it's right there. Great view I saw, like the, the artist renderings, and it's going to be amazing. So all those companies that have large events that normally go to you know, Chicago and all those other places, come on down to South Florida. The Broad Convention Center will also have their LEED Gold Certified uh, certification. It's a leadership in energy and environmental design. That means you're going to make things energy efficient, maybe do some green items, and it's going to be better for the environment because they are using a big footprint with the expansion and the building and all that. So they're giving back to the environment by making certain things sustainable, green, energy efficient, totally the way to go for the future. So those are big convention center. What's going to happen to the little guy, the little venues? Like, uh, I think it was on Friday, I went to a small venue by the Fort Lauderdale Beach, and it was packed. Between the decor that they were showcasing, the vendors that were there preparing their food, with their floral arrangements, with the music, with the photo booth, with the makeup artist, with the cigar, there's a lot of people. And so if you have a static venue, you can't expand, you're leasing a space, what do you do? Well, I must commend the venue because they did have hand sanitizing stations. Most people had on their masks, some did not. At the entrance, they did take your temperature, for sure. So, they could not social distance. It, was, it wasn't it was big enough. But there was an inside-outside kind of a flow to things. So 
it wasn't it wasn't that bad but what are you gonna do you can't break the wall down you just have to work with what you have and keep reminding people to sanitize and keep the mask on when they're not eating at this point that's that's what they can do with what they have they don't have the funds or the space like the convention centers do to break down walls and make things bigger and all that. You know, they're just doing the best they can. What I do for my events is I have a pandemic mitigation station at the entrance to the venue. And <clears throat> I have a pandemic mitigation coordinator and that person stands by the door, well-dressed, mask, gloves, everything, they greet the guests, take the temperature. If there's somebody coming in without a mask, they'll be handed a mask. There's sanitizers as well. There's stations around the room, stickers on the floor. I also, if there's a backdrop, I have more than one. So there's no crowding to take pictures and post on Instagram, try to squeeze into the backdrop or there's a line. None of that. We have more than one backdrop. I also have a little blurb, like a little script for the DJ. It's maybe four lines for them to read, reminding everyone to social distance as much as possible, wear the mask, wash your hands and sanitize. That's the best we can do for now because uh, venues only have a limited space, you know. And this, this change in the requirements for the pandemic as far as social distancing does impact your event budget and i'm going to give you an example so if you last week i gave an example of using hashtags to increase your event engagement and i used the example of the bling body jewelry store doing a pop-up jewelry show in winwood called the bling bash and so I'm gonna use them again as an example so they they want to get their product out there they want to get a large attendance at their event but their budget is tight when the venue could hold a hundred people in round tables of 10 or uh, they use a big square 72 inch table they do 10 people they can't anymore. If you do four people per table, you're going to have a good, you're gonna need a good 25 tables versus the 10 tables you would have had if you only had the 100 people at in rounds of 10. It just increases your budget. So as somebody who's having an event, you have to be very, very strategic with your budget, very focused and you can't just be willy-nilly. You have to have a plan. How much money do you have to spend? What is the important thing you need to spend it on to get the most impact? This tip I'm about to share with you will help you to get the most impact for your event. If you're just launching your business, launching a product, you're having an event, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on advertising for your event. So, reality shows are very, very popular. I used to watch Whose Wedding Is It Anyway, where the wedding planners would take you for a behind the scenes look at the consultation with the client, finding out what they want, going to the vendors, and that whole thing. Then, House Hunters, and House Hunters International became popular on HGTV. That's like a reality show behind the scenes as well. You get to see them talking about what they want in their ideal home or their forever home or their vacation home, the elements they're looking for, the location, all of that. And you get to see the behind the scenes. It's to the point where the show got so big that you they created a drawing for your forever home or dream home a sweepstakes if you will where they build it from scratch and they give you the behind the scenes of it all as well they take you through the construction of it and the decoration of it and you go along with them for the journey housewives of the potomac 
Housewives of Atlanta, Basketball Wives, all of it. I look into people's lives as they go through their, the ebbs and flows, the highs and lows, all of it. You get to see the behind the scenes of it all and you get engaged, you're curious. It's like <sighs> voyeurism that is accepted on TV, okay? So that's where I'm going with this idea for today. If you have started a business and you want to have an event to promote it or introduce it, get your audience involved. So from uh, you, you're creating the product or you have created it, but you can show snippets of it, you know, not the whole everything to kind of put your secrets out there, but snippets of it, conversations about creative, finding the venue, maybe getting labels for the product, a little behind the scenes and you take your audience on the journey from day one until the day of the product launch or the launch party. So that is number one. You're going to show behind the scenes videos. And I say videos for behind the scenes because there are some things behind the scenes that you don't want to be all over social media. Uh, discussions that not everyone should be privy to. So you take snippets of what you can show and you make it into a video and uh, maybe you could title it uh, packaging, product packaging. This video is on product packaging and you, you have them follow you through drawing your idea, going to the printers, putting the labels on the product. That's one video. Then you want to do a live showcasing, showcasing the finished product. Go live on your Instagram, on your Facebook, uh, on your YouTube, use those videos, feed them into your Twitter, feed them into your website and get people engaged because they saw when you kind of created the, the, the product and labeled it. Now it's complete. Then they can ride with you for your discussion on marketing as much as, as you can and advertising for the product. And then getting your list together for the event and they can ride with you the whole way. So that's number one, behind the scenes videos. Number two is your lives. You go live once the product is complete. That way you can show a perfect product because if you're going live, I mean, People don't mind seeing flaws anyway, but you don't want such a, you don't want to run the risk of something big happening that you can't undo. You can't like suck it back from Facebook before somebody sees it. The moment you post something online, the moment you go live, it's everywhere. So before you go live, you want to make sure everything is okay. You have your uh, product display set up, you're dressed right and you go live and you show your customers what your product is and what problem it solves. Any questions so far before we get into the third one? All right, the third one is manage your social media conversation. From last week, we were talking about using the hashtag to gain engagement. So you would employ all those strategies and I'll post the link in this live of what I did last week. So for those who weren't there and needed some tips on using hashtags, it'll be in the comments after this show. So you'll use the hashtag from the start of the creating the product all the way to the day of the event. You get the conversation going, you get your staff to share and use the, the hashtag, get your family member, get your friends, help 
have them help you spread it all over the internet. And there's no cost for that. There's no cost for bringing people along for the ride. I use iMovie to edit my, my videos. It's all on my phone. I shoot the video. I edit the color and the lighting and all that. I put it into iMovie and I remove, add, all that kind of stuff to have the video flow and tell a story. No extra cost for that. The hashtag is also free. Going live is also free. You just need help in spreading the word about your event. So you're going to have everyone you know use the hashtag. You're going to go where people are that use your product or would be your prospects that might use your product. You go where they are, you join the conversation, you add value by showing them what your product can do for the problem that they're talking about. All right, so three ways to make your event into a, a reality show that's going to get you event engagement. One, the behind the scenes videos. Super, super important. You get people engaged, they're interested. According to uh, society, they don't really like voyeurism, but we all do it. We people watch. That's the PC name for it. But you know, we're on the beach, we're at the mall, you're sitting, you're looking at people. You know, people dress funny, people dress good, people say wacky things, people say serious things, you know, you just sit and watch. It's normal. And that's why these reality shows are so popular. You get to see the behind the scenes of it all. So the videos, the lives, and participate in social media conversation. Hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, go ahead and hashtag replay. I will get the notification and respond to you. I'm also going to post a link for the show from last week. If you have any questions, let's connect. Follow me on Facebook at My Pro Event Planners. I'm on LinkedIn at Melody Dixon. Instagram at Melody D. Dixon. YouTube, uh, TikTok, and where else? Twitter. Twitter, I'm at Pro Event Planner. YouTube and TikTok, Pro Event Planners. I also have a blog that I'm going to post the link to as well. It's on the website. The website is myproeventplanners.com. Subscribe to the blog. I write articles that will have the tips and helpful information on what to do, what not to do to save you money for your event. All right. If this, they, if these tips can help someone, go ahead and share it. Have them subscribe to the blog as well and the YouTube channel. There's a lot of videos there on how to. If you're growing your event planning business, there's tips there for you as well. If you're decorating, I have how-to videos and I have demonstration videos in the Pro Event Planners Design Studio that I post as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m.